everyone enjoys comedy. This isn't some sort of exaggeration, it's factual that every sentient person on the planet enjoys comedy to some extent. Sure, maybe you don't particularly like comedy movies or stand-up comedy or musical comedy. Maybe you're even an absolute killjoy and don't enjoy inside jokes or people telling jokes to your face, but you still enjoy comedy. It's commonly said that laughter is the best medicine, and I think that even more than that, it's an even better distraction. Humor is like a different universe that you can enter into and experience, and it's a universe that everyone has a place in. No matter what type of comedy you enjoy, there's always a corner in the humor universe for you to live in. Maybe that's a bit of a weird introduction to this video, but hey, we're going to be talking about an even weirder film today. First, it's important to talk about what type of humor I personally enjoy and what corner of that universe I reside in. And that is more difficult to explain than it sounds. I love comedy, I adore it more than most things that humans can create, and in doing so I find myself appreciative of even types of comedy that I don't laugh at. For example, I have so much respect for the Monty Python comedy troupe as well as the Three Stooges. They're both timeless acts who are groundbreaking for what they are able to do for the comedy genre. However, I'd be lying to you if I said that I spent my free time watching them or if I even laughed at their comedy. Once again, nothing but respect to them, but I simply don't laugh at it. I can't help it. Sometimes I wish that I did because my sense of humor is incredibly particular and bizarre. For one, I find it incredibly funny when people are able to push humor to the brink of what it truly means to be funny. For example, I love ironic and postmodern attempts at humor that you can find in memes such as this. Or even famous movies such as The Room and Cool Cat Saves the Kids. That led me to a common theme that I've realized makes me laugh more than anything else, and that, my friends, is incompetence. Yes, every time that someone makes a mistake in real life, in movies, despite the fact that I have absolutely no excuse to do so, makes me laugh more than anything else. Now, that's why I find it so funny when major studios put out horrendous mistakes, such as releasing the Mummy trailer with no audio, or releasing the Amazing Spider-Man 2. For another example, one of the hardest times that I've ever laughed in my entire life is when I was watching this wrestling match, and yes, I do watch that. Please, God, don't judge me. Famous wrestler Cameron, one of the worst wrestlers to ever be featured on television, decided to confidently and with assurance pin a woman face down, which is not allowed within the rules. This led to her being yelled at by the referee when he wouldn't count, and she had to turn him over because Cameron is an absolute moron. I mean, that's hilarious to me, and I'm glad that's hilarious. And with that being said, let's talk about Vampire's Kiss, starring Nicolas Cage. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, L, P, U, R, S, T, U, V, Q, U, X, Y, Z, Pop! That's all you have to do! Vampire's Kiss is about a depressed and socially inept businessman who thinks he got bitten by a vampire, but the audience doesn't really know for sure, as this could all be the delusions of a raving lunatic whose name is Nicolas Cage. Yes, I'm not joking, Vampire's Kiss is legitimately my favorite comedy of all time. It's a close race between that and Borat, I won't lie, but... I mean, come on, look at Vampire's Kiss. Despite the fact that Borat's a traditional comedy film and it's better than being that at the, than uh, Vampire's Kiss is, I simply laugh more when it comes to Vampire's Kiss. Sure, Borat has an abundance of political depth in addition to its comedy, but Vampire's Kiss is Vampire's Kiss. I'm talking about repeat viewings here as well. I find new things to laugh at every time I watch Vampire's Kiss, and the reason because of that is because of this film's enigmatic stance. I find that this film is a complete enigma in terms of a competence that replenishes every time I rewatch it. Some of you may know this film from the viral meme face that Nicolas Cage makes here. It's a horrible, horrible job sifting through old contract after old contract. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. And you have to do it. You have to, or I'll fire you. Do you understand? Maybe from iconic clips such as this. I had a difficult day yesterday. <laughs> Got 
a little upset. At the office. It seems pretty obvious that this movie is atrocious in just about every way, right? You're probably thinking he just enjoys this movie in a so bad it's good kind of way. Then why doesn't he like movies like The Room more? And my response to that is, this film is not entirely bad on accident. Believe it or not, this is one of the few films that is so bad it's good on purpose and manages to pull it off. Now, I don't have an abundance of support behind my claim that the crew of this film knew the movie was bad while making it, but if you listen to the audio commentary, you can hear the director Robert Bierman and Nick Cage himself laughing at the movie's incompetence. So by those standards, it seems pretty obvious that they realize this movie is utter trash and that self-awareness, along with conflictions within the film, is exactly why this movie is so special to me and why I think it surpasses your regular bad comedy. This whole alphabet sequence, you know, I guess... I don't know how Mick Jagger figures into this, but <laughs> there is a, yes, there is a pose. There's a pose that's very Jagger-esque. And I all culminated up to that, I guess. But this is, um, you know, it's like you do this scene, and we're not even halfway through the film, is how do you top this? First off, the star of this film, in every sense of the word, is Nicolas Cage. I was a little drunk. Plus, I was horny. This is his best performance that I've seen him do. It's unquestionably unique and visceral, and his constant overacting is a joy to behold. And I was so pleased to find when I was watching the film that the best scenes of Cage overreacting weren't spoiled for me at all. In fact, some of his best scenes are ones that I've never saw in a meme compilation or anything like that. I must admit that one of the film's best aspects is the fact that I still to this day, after seeing this movie around five times, I'm not sure if Nick Cage intentionally believes that he's giving a good performance or if he knows he's doing a god-awful job. I prefer to think it's a bit of both. What makes it even funnier to me is that in spite of Cage's incompetent acting, his co-star Maria Alonso is genuinely acting her heart out in every scene, completely dedicated to the film's assert premise when no one else is. She's the only person on set who seems to be trying, which makes Vampire's Kiss even that much funnier to me, because whenever Cage's deranged character assaults her or abuses her in the film, it's almost as if she's being degraded for doing her job at this bizarre world where no one else is doing their job correctly. In addition to that, the fact that Cage is constantly isolated and that's the reason why his delusions begin surfacing also works to the film's benefits, as the plot and presentation of the film itself seems more like it's coming from a madman like Cage's character. The thing that eventually made me decide to watch this movie all the way through is when I looked on IMDb and noticed this film was listed under comedy instead of drama or horror. This made me ponder about if the film was actually satirical and funny on purpose. But I can tell you after watching that this film's intent was most likely not to be funny. However, with that being said, I don't think this film even knew what its intent was as it was incompetent at everything it set out to do. There's that word again, incompetent, because that's exactly what Vampire's Kiss is. An incompetent and unusual lesson in what happens when you let Nick Cage go absolutely bonkers with complete creative freedom. You don't have charms like that when it comes to your average comedy. Even bad B-films that are much worse than this one don't have the charm of receiving a general wide release and having Nick Cage in it. Good comedies are good comedies because they have solid setups and stellar comedic payoffs, and bad comedies are bad because they fail at that. Vampire's Kiss is an amazing comedy in spite of failing at anything that makes a comedy good. And that, friends, is why it's my favorite comedy of all time. Sorry, Borat. I love you too. Thanks for watching this far into the video, guys. If you enjoyed this content or enjoy my more serious videos like this, be sure to subscribe because I want to do more of these in the future as well as my comedic videos. Expect an Omegle Part 2 pretty soon because that's on the come up and, uh, yeah, just um, thanks. Thanks for being here, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.